Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about the sequence function. So it's just seq, and this function um, is just going to generate um, a series of numbers for us. And we're gonna talk about why it's useful, but let's just start off with an example here. So let's say we create x, um, and we want to generate a list of numbers, so we would use the sequence function, and say we want to start from uh, one and we want to go to say 10 we can execute this code and if we print out x you'll see we end up with a vector that goes from 1 to 10. So this is pretty basic and straightforward but something else we can do is we can add um, the by statement here and we can get um, different series of numbers for a vector but um, we get these by different increments. Okay, so let's do the same example as above, but instead of x, let's just create something called y. Uh, we wanna do some sequence. Uh, let's say we want to do from zero to, let's say five, and we're gonna do this by 0.5, okay? And we'll print this out. And we run these, you can see we start with zero, which is the from, and then we increment by 0.5, and we go all the way up until we end up with five. Okay, and another thing we can add to this function here is going to be the length statement, okay? Um, the length statement can be used um, to divide a series of numbers, or I should say more or less a range of numbers here uh, into equal parts. Okay, so let's just do a simple example. Um, let's just rewrite this and say, so I'm not gonna assign this to any value. So like above, we assigned it to X and Y. We're just gonna do a quick calculation and see what comes out. Um, but let's just say we're gonna do the sequence of uh, from 10 to 100. And we're gonna do this in a length. So now we're gonna use the length statement stat and I want this by increments of 10. Uh, what we should see here is you know 10 20 30 40 all the way up to 100 so it's 10 in total and we run this you see it's 10 20 30 40 all the way up to 100. Uh, let's just test this out though and say let's do sequence from uh let's just say 1 to 100 and we'll do again the length is going to be equal to 10 and we'll run this uh, you can see now that it goes 1, 12, 23, all the way up to 100. Uh, if you don't believe me, um, I'll leave this as an exercise. Just type in 1 into a calculator. Uh, you'll see that the difference here is going to be 11. So do 1 plus 11 is 12. 12 plus 11 is 23. And you can keep adding up, and you'll see that you'll actually end up at 100. But this is quite useful if you need to divide a range of numbers or a series here uh, into equal parts. Okay, and the final kind of concept we're gonna talk about here is that uh, the sequence function can be used to avoid uh, empty vector issues inside of code. Um, so what do I mean by this? Well, let's create an example here. So let's say we're gonna create A. A is going to be empty. And then we're gonna create a simple function. So we'll do a for loop where you have i in one, two, length of a. And then to see what we're actually doing here, we're just gonna print i out. And if we run this here, so we need to run a with it, uh, you'll see it should print out one and zero. The reason being is that i always starts at one. So you throw one in here, you print one and then it goes to the length, and since it's empty, it's gonna think it's size zero, and then it's gonna do a loop for zero. Realistically here, if A is empty, in most cases, I don't want it to do anything because it's empty and null, and I don't want it to generate values and mislead me. So when you print it, as we said, you know, it'll do one and zero. Um, so we can fix this issue uh, with the sequence uh, function. And the way to do this is you do the same one. So do four um, i in, and then we just do sequence. And you do a sequence of a, and then the actual body of the code will be the same. So we print out i here. And now, 
as before, right, we already ran a, you can see up here it is null and empty. Uh, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna print it down here. So I'll run this and you see nothing happens. Okay, it generates nothing. Nothing comes out of this. Uh, if you look up here on the top right, uh, you'll see that I, which we're trying to print, is null and empty, so it does not print anything. Uh, this is what you would want to happen in many scenarios, so it's important to notice here that it catches this issue. However, I should note here, kind of just to prove to you guys here, uh, that both functions work with actual data. So actual data or actual you know, numbers inside the vector. Okay, so let's just recreate this. Let's overwrite A, so now it's no longer empty or null. Let's just say it's two, three, and four. So we're gonna run this real quick. And you'll see up here A is two, three, and four. And then let's go back up here and copy uh, the first one, which generated one and zero. All right, paste that below and run it, and you'll see that it goes through the looping, uh, and it does one, two, and three. So what it's doing is it's printing one to the length, so the first is gonna be obviously one, and then the length of A is three, so it'll print out one, two, and three. And then if we do the same thing, but now we use the sequence function and we print it out, it'll do the exact same thing, but in this case it just says, you know, for I in this sequence, and the sequence is a total length of three, so you can see here that we get the exact same results. So anyways, that's how the sequent function works. It's quite useful. You'll see that as you get going, uh, you'll find new and useful uses for it. But anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.